Hello, and welcome to this homework help video. This is the second of the videos covering these two problems because the last one ran a little long and I wanted to split them up. So we're here going to look at number two, all about telescopes. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, if you've seen it, there's an extra formula that we need that is not included here. It's, I guess, under the, co the idea of previous content, and that is the angular size formula. It's a crucial formula for relating what we can see in the sky and the size of things, objects in the sky. And if we know their distance to that object, the real distance from Earth to that object, then we can calculate the size of the object. And the formula is simple. It says that the angle is just going to be the size of the object over the distance. So the object over distance. So very small angle. And um, it was, um, so here we had um, basically that, oh, here I had it be the radius over the distance, so R and B. Um, for that problem, it was uh, involving the star Betelgeuse, why that's always a B. So we'll stick with R and D. So size of the object and distance to the object. So R is size. And these units, by the way, R and D can be in anything. They can, we can just leave them in kilometers, for example, if that's what we want them in. Um, so, but this is just size of a distance, okay? Um, I think probably using kilometers is a smart choice, so we'll do that. And then distance, all right, also in kilometers. The reason we don't have to worry about converting kilometers to meters, like it's, it's like we often do, and it's such a big deal, is because this is a ratio. So whatever are the units of R and D will just cancel, all right? They could both be light years. They could both be astronomical units. Okay, so we'll need that in part A of the problem because we're asked to find, so using this formula, which is not the one I just wrote, but the one that's included, what is the minimum diameter telescope that will be needed to resolve a planet around another star, so an exoplanet, if that planet has an orbital radius of 6 AU and the star is 4.5 light years from Earth, okay? So we have to convert those over both to kilometers, I think is a smart way to do it, because um, the diameter of the orbit is the size of the object, okay? So we should definitely, we'll double this to get the, get the diameter of the orbit, and that will be the size of the object. So D um, is two times the radius. I don't want to confuse us and put an R there. So it's two times the given radius. The radius is 6 AU. Well, 6 AU is 6 times 150 million kilometers, because in an astronomical unit is 150 million kilometers, so 1.50 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. Okay, there we go. So that would be the size of the object, which is its the diameter of its orbit. Okay, so that's going to be one of our values. We can go ahead and put that in. Uh, the other value for R is the light years. So that was 4.5, all right? And of course, you know what? I'm not going to use the numbers you're using, of course. Let's have a bigger orbit, so maybe a, like a gas giant or something. So we'll have 18 AU. Um, but we'll have it uh, much further away, all right? So um, uh, four and a half light years is about as close as a star is. Um, the, st the closest stars are around three, uh, three light years away. So not many stars are that close. So, you know, it's being pretty optimistic about being able to uh, have, you know, this is the best case scenario, the, you know, the, the, small, the largest angle you could possibly have because the closest, you know, the planet is to us, this other planet in another solar system, well, the, you know, that's, that's the best case scenario, the easiest to see. So let's make it further away, is my point. Um, I'm gonna have it be 41 light years away. So 41, um, for a light year, let's get a good value here. It's about nine trillion kilometers, but let's see. I wanted to get it in better units for you, or more accuracy. So 9.46, okay, so 9.46 um, times 10 to the 12 kilometers. Um, as far as astronomical units, you're fine using um, AU. Um, I or you know using excuse me using 150 uh, million. I would only say that it might be more accurate to 1.49, um, but then again, I, I think 1.50 works fine for AU. I'm just thinking of it because I'm giving this value for um, a light year, you know, with some some greater deal of accuracy. Uh, but no, actually, yep. So this one does round to 1.50 if you just keep the three digits. Good. 
So this is one of those ones that's really easy to remember with full accuracy, 1.50, at least to three significant figures. All right, one, two, three. So those are our values. Let's go ahead and find the angle. The big thing to remember about this angle is the angle is going to be in radians, okay? So let's take a look here. Um, so we have, okay, actually that's, that's nice because we don't have to convert. Um, some, sometimes when we use this, um, this angular formula, which is, you know, it's great because it's so simple, right? Just R over D, um, that, but the answer is always going to be in radians. Sometimes then we have to think about the size and degrees, especially if we're talking about the night sky and we're splitting that sky up into de two degrees, arc minutes and arc seconds. So, but here we don't because we, we have another formula we're going to relate it to this telescope formula, which itself is a radian formula. So we can just plug it right in as, as it is. Because remember, circles can be measured in two ways, 360 degrees to go all the way around or two pi radians to go all the way around. They both have pros and cons of, of simplifying certain calculations depending on what you're doing. Um, if you didn't want to use a radian formula here, you'd have to use a formula that involved actually taking um, inverse trigonometric functions, which is fine, but not something you necessarily have familiarity with. So this is the easier one to use. Okay, so we can go ahead and calculate the angular size of this exoplanet's orbit using the radian formula. All right, so we'll plug in 2 times 18 times 1.50 times 10 to the 8 kilometers, all right, for r. And then in the denominator, we'll put the 41 light years, so 41 times 9.46 times 10 to the 12. See, 9.46 trillion kilometers, okay? Nothing squared here, it's just a ratio. All right, so let's get our calculation and we'll calculate it over here. All right, so I'm gonna be calling this, um, I guess for angle, I will call it A. Um, so let's not call this A anymore. All right, so this is our angle. You know, I'd, I'd love to call it theta, but um, I, that's not one of my options as far as I can tell. I don't have uh, special letters. So it was called A, okay? And then we'll set up our fraction over here, okay? Which we don't have to do ahead of time, but I just wanted to. Two times, 18, all right, times 1.50. So this planet is 18 times further from its star than we are. That's what it means when it has a, uh, a radius of 18 astronomical units. Okay, there we go. Those are in kilometers, that looks good. Now let's take care of the 41 light years. Okay, 41 times 9.46 times 10 to the 12th. Okay. So there is our angle. It's uh, we expected it to be very smart, very very small. Okay, so one point three nine times ten to the negative five radians. Okay, so if you know this is some tiny fraction of a circle because these things are are incredibly small. Nothing you can see with the naked eye, obviously. These are tiny spots. Um, but the resolving power of telescopes, actually, you will see, is, should allow us to uh, be able to see this with not a too giant telescope. All right. So let's see, then I'm going to solve for D, because that is, after all, what you are solving for. It says, with a particular wavelength, we're going to find the diameter of the telescope itself. So the unknown value is this value right here in the formula, D, okay? It just tells you how big of a lens you need, how, how wide across must your telescope be in order to, best case scenario, be able to see this exoplanet. And um, reality check, most telescopes can't see exoplanets, all right? We can detect them indirectly by the wobble of the star because their gravity pulls on the star slightly, but we rarely can just take photos of them, okay? So let's see then. Let's see how big of a telescope we need. And then we'll interpret that answer briefly, all right? So if I'm going to rearrange this equation to solve for D, it'll simply become D equals 1.5. 2, 2 times lambda, which is given, that is the wavelength of the light, divided by theta, theta in radians, just like we have it, okay? So the, um, the wavelength is obviously artificially given, right? Uh, any star or planet isn't, just, isn't going to produce just a single wavelength. Um, even um, atomic spectra isn't one wavelength, it's a nice defined set of, of very particular wavelengths. But a solid object like a planet um, that is probably re primarily reflecting light from the, um, its star is going to be producing tons of different wavelengths. But maybe we're just choosing one particular one to focus on in, in our, um, our telescope, right? Because if we, if we figure we can resolve this, in, this wavelength 
then we can um, resolve wavelengths that would be any sm anything smaller. Right, because you think about it, it's dependent on lambda. So then, if we needed, if we did need to resolve higher wavelengths, we would have to have a bigger diameter telescope. So this is kind of the upper limit of what wavelengths we're expecting to be looking at. Okay, which um, that seems fine. All right, we can go from there. All right, so let's plug in our numbers: one point two two times four hundred, and remember it's nanometers, so that's times ten to the negative nine. Here, the units matter because we want our diameter to be in meters or uh, maybe centimeters or something. Okay, so diameter of the telescope, both in meters, okay? Good, all right. Uh, would be needed, I say, okay, what is the minimum diameter of the telescope that would be needed on the star? I, I won't say whether I want it in centimeters or meters, so we'll just give the value in meters, okay? All right, and then we'll finally put in our radian value down there, okay? All right, radians don't really have units, they are just a ratio of the circumference of a circle to its, um, or rather the radius of a, of a circle to its circumference. Um, so they, we can just put them in like that. Okay, so we'll go back over here and we'll set up the top, the numerator, with the 1.22. Um, That's just a constant that comes from um, the circular nature of lenses. Okay, and then the wavelength that we were given, 400 times 10 to the negative 9. Okay, and then we'll divide that. Not, oh, not in the exponent. We'll divide it the whole thing, all right, uh, that would work. It's kind of confusing though, right? So here, let's just put parentheses around it. There we go. And then we'll just divide that whole thing. So it's really clear. So it looks like the equation. Um, and then we'll go ahead and just divide by A, which we have saved in the calculator. Okay, so there we are. All right, that is three centimeters, okay? So I'll write it in meters. So I'll just do that, Zero point zero uh three five meters but it's really natural to write that number as 3.5 centimeters okay that's your answer now that seems wrong right because wait that's just like a little hobby telescope three and a half centimeters is a tiny lens it's like a, a spyglass or something a pair of binoculars can you really see an exoplanet with a pair of binoculars if that's the case why did why were why weren't they discovered until the 1990s well this is actually the case in terms of the angular size and telescope's ability to magnify. Here's the crux of it though. This rarely matters, okay? It can sometimes, and maybe part, part B is a more relevant type of question, but it, it rarely matters because it's not the resolution power of the telescopes that limits them. It's the relative brightness of objects, okay? It's the, it's the ability to collect light and actually see what's going on in that light because this, this planet is gonna be completely washed out by the light of its star. The star is so many million times brighter than the small amount of reflected light that we could see that we, it wouldn't matter that we, could, we can see you know, this level of resolution, this angular le uh, level of resolution of such a small telescope because the light of the star would spread out over a bigger angle, obscuring anything behind it, okay? The light smears out because it's so bright, okay? So, you know, it's interesting to think about, but realize maybe how that sometimes just one calculation isn't the end of the story, okay? It's just, it's just the start of understanding how a particular device works, in this case, a telescope, okay? So telescopes aren't just about their ability to magnify, okay? You know, it's still a relevant formula. You still need to know what is the, you know, the resolution limit. Uh, resolution limits are more important for maybe looking at more nearby objects where there's not, you don't have to worry about so much brightness. So if you're trying to use a, a telescope to look at, you know, rocks on the moon or something, well then, you know, yeah, you, you probably would be pushing right up against the resolution uh, limit and the, the light capturing ability wouldn't matter so much. Um, also, I think for um, part B, where I talk about the smallest object a telescope could resolve at a very great distance. So a distance of 1 billion light years, okay? And the telescope has an unbelievable diameter, basically, a bit, well, not actually possible, right? But if you look at it, it almost seems unbelievable. This is a, a huge mirror that is 41 meters across, okay? This is um, this kind of ideal case. We're able to manufacture bigger and bigger mirrors these days, you know? So now we have a 41, me 41 meter mirror. And it would be more likely a mirror than a lens. Uh, lenses work better for small telescopes, but we're, it's the same, many of the same principles. So we have a huge, huge telescope that uses, uses a giant diameter mirror. The, re you know, the resolution is still limited. It's still circular, right? So we still use the same formula. But 
think about that. That's a huge telescope. It seems like we should be able to see incredible detail. And at where everything's about the same amount of brightness, what we should be seeing at, at a distance of one billion light years, we should be able to be able to see perhaps between individual stars in the galaxy, look at details um, of the, 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 the galactic arms of that galaxy, really be able to see tiny, tiny things. Um, I'm not going to solve this one, I think, but I'll, I'll go. It's the same exact process. Um, what you want to do is you want to instead solve for R, right? Because it does ask, what's the smallest object, okay? So what you're going to do in this one is you're going to start with the formula, D equals 1.22 lambda times theta. And I do, I do believe I tell you to use the same lambda. Let's double check. Um, similarly, okay, um, Yep, give the, give the size of the object in kilometers, so do note that. Yeah, so we're going to be using the same, the same lambda, same formula, okay? All right, so then we solve for theta, because don't, we don't know what the angular size is yet that this telescope supports. This would be the minimum angular size that this telescope can achieve, and it would just be 1.22 times that 400, I'm kind of doing it, I'm just, I just won't plug in the numbers, times ne negative 9, and then meters, Okay, so that's just uh, 1.22 times lambda, and then divided by the given diameter of the telescope, which was uh, some 41 meters. Let's say we have a less uh, less amazing one, 25 meters. Okay, still huge, right? That's still 60 feet across. You know, it's a huge mirror, right? I don't think they've actually manufactured any, but there's a lot of talk of making ones of that size. Hopefully, in the near future. Okay, they're getting bigger and bigger as the manufacturing gets more and more precise. So then you know that value, right? So you can calculate that value. Similarly, you probably want to use a calculate Desmos because then you're going to take that value and feed it into the next formula, okay? And by the way, you don't have to worry about your calculator in degree mode because you're not actually using any trig functions. We're just using this, what's called a linear approximation. So it doesn't matter. It's all algebra, okay? Um, point being, though, is that you're going to put that theta function into the angular distance function, all right? So then we've got that theta equals r over d, Right, and what do we solve for? We solve for the size of the ob object R, which is just going to be, if we multiply both sides by D, theta times D, okay? And D is going to be that huge distance of one billion light years. So it's gonna be you know some small number for theta, and then times 100 times 10 to the nine, because that's 100, well, it'd be 100 billion. We want 1 billion. So, because uh, nothing is 100 billion um, kilometers away, or excuse me, light years away. There are things 100 billion kilometers away, certainly. But nothing is 100 billion light years away because the whole universe is only about 13 billion light years across because it's only 13 billion years old, right? Okay, so one times 10 to the nine, okay, that's light years, but then times 9.46, times 10 to the 12, right? Because we have a billion light years, each of which is a is nine trillion kilometers, okay? So there you go, that would be the size of your object. Uh, it's not gonna probably be in what you think of as an object, it's more of a distance between stars, right? This is the 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 two stars that you could resolve as two distinct stars that are this this far apart. Um, the only thing that would probably be, you know, this size, because it's gonna be large, I, I, if I remember correctly, would be maybe something like a su supermassive black hole. But those are different, difficult to resolve in the visible spectrum, so you probably wouldn't be looking at them. Okay, so this is the um, the whole approach. This is with some example numbers for part A, and you can see part B is just similar uh, with different unknowns. So I hope this homework help video has been informative. Thank you for watching.